Hello my friend, my name is Tobol. Welcome to Phoenix Point. Before we kick things off, let's watch this introduction cutscene to learn a little bit more about the world and our new enemies, the Pandorans. In what may be the hottest year in history, scientists have recorded radical changes to the permafrost in Antarctica. The Pandora virus, a so-called giant virus with the largest genome size ever recorded. The crabs also display increased aggression, even towards larger predators. A striking new weather anomaly has claimed many coastlines around the world. NASA is examining these clouds to figure out... We've detected large amounts of an organic composite. So far, the sample doesn't match any of the DNA records we've compared it with. We all saw it. Those creatures coming out of the sea on that oil rig. The president has declared a national emergency... It's obvious that what we're dealing with here is a biological weapon. As of today, we are at war. It's taking their minds. I saw them walk right into the sea. Thousands of people. Thousands. The mist is gone, but the city is dead. The roads are broken. You must join one of the havens. Do not attempt to survive on your own. All right, so here we are. Welcome. This world has been quite changed, it seems. So welcome to a brand new Earth, apparently with 100% uh, more crustaceans. We're going to start up a brand new game, and we will be going through this game on the Hero Difficulty. And I will skip the tutorial. I have done a little bit so far, but by and large, the story is completely unknown to me. I would prefer to stay that way. I really don't know or want to know what's coming up. I'd rather just kind of see it as it happens. And uh, yeah, so pretty much I'd love for you to join along with me. I will say if you're interested in this game or you already know you want to pick this up, I do have a link below this video in the more description field here below. And you can click on that and use my creator code at the Epic Store. That basically helps me out and you also still get the game. If you'd like to uh, have your character in this playthrough, please leave me a comment based on, if you know the classes, go ahead and include the class that you want, but otherwise just throw me your name if you want a full name with a, you know, a nickname in the middle, or you just want a nickname, that's fine too. Throw that in there and I will definitely try to get your name in the game later on. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this playthrough. This will be a very long playthrough, one hour episodes each, so sit back and enjoy this opening introduction movie. The Phoenix Project was founded on October 24th, 1945. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries, even the heavens were not off limits. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN. Stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, we should have been the first line of defense. When huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea, when people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going on. And when those people started coming back, changed, hostile, alien, we should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose, New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning and armies are rising from the sea. Without the Phoenix Project, humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. So there you have it. That's the scene for our game to start out with. We are... Uh, now, every time you launch the game, you will be randomized somewhere on Earth. And uh, Earth as we know it, by the way, is, is changed a lot. Uh, we're missing Florida over here on the North American coast. Obviously, South America's got a couple of changes as well. 
So some coastal areas have seen some adjustments. It still looks like um, the Mediterranean is still identifiable along with the UK and Scandinavia. So some things are similar. Some things have changed a bit. Now we're over here in, uh, in Asia and you can see a bunch of these different sites. And these are basically unexplored sites that we have to send a troop to, at least one troop, one soldier, and we'll start to explore that site. What else is going on? There's lots of stuff up here on the screen. So we have these tech points, material points, food. Uh, we also have our capacity, some research labs, basically how many research labs uh, at any given time. We also have an overall amount of soldiers. And really, it's interesting. It, our base, let's take a look at our base right here. We only have four people at the base. So the idea is that you've been uh, rescued by this autonomous vehicle that came to your house. You jumped inside and it took you back to this haven here, this little, uh, this Phoenix base. And you were part of the Phoenix mission or the Phoenix point project or whatever it happens to be. Uh, we can see that we've got a couple of options. If we click on any building, we can power it off. And you can actually see the power that every building uses. And we have a, a total of 20. I don't know, is it per every single energy reactor? Maybe it's 20 per each of these. Uh, we have a vehicle here which houses our... What's the name of this thing? It's the Manticore. The Manticore is what takes us to and from our mission. And if you notice right here next to the Manticore, this is the troops that we have, or these are the troops that we have. And you can tell that we have actually slots for two more soldiers, but we can't rec recruit them just yet. We have to do a little bit of research into that. Speaking of soldiers, let's take a look at our personnel. So here are the soldiers that make up our brave squad. We've got a couple of folks uh, all from our supporter community here. So Zillikin, Turnby, Dominic, and Jade. We can see obviously they're carrying different weapons and they've got different outfits and whatnot. Uh, they do, you can customize your characters. There is actually a little bit of customization options available. Not quite as much as XCOM 2, but I assume if this game gets modding support, uh, you'll see modders going crazy with different things that are available. So that's always kind of fun. We'll give uh, Zill kind of this glorious white knight defender against all evil coloration. I do want to kind of see him at a glance too. It would be really helpful to know who I'm looking at. We've got Turnby, our sniper. By the way, sorry, uh, Zillikin is our heavy. does have like a one-shot explosive round in his heavy cannon, his heavy phoenix cannon, uh, or cannon even. Turnby is our sniper, of course, who is uh, looking pretty sleek with his all-in red getup. Dominic is one of our two assaulters, and finally we have Jade, one of our other assaulters. Now, every class so far does have some customization options, so you can level them up as you go. You also get the option to change uh, some of their stats. Now, there is two pools here, and we're able to get individual, uh, I believe it's skill points, and then we also have uh, kind of a combined pool, like Phoenix skill as a whole. Uh, the Phoenix point, rather, has a pool of skill points we could used to maybe give someone, you know, flesh out their, their, their attribute or something like that. So it also looks like uh, the, uh, the secondary stuff for our Assaulter class is a bit different. So it looks like there's a bit of it that's randomized. We have this section here looks to stay the same. The other stuff, though, is a bit different. So, for example, Dominic apparently can get the Sniperist trait or ability or whatever this is called. Uh, gain sniper rifle proficiency with 25% damage, but it reduces their willpower by four. We'll talk about this different stats later on. Uh, Jade has a couple of things that are different. Bombardier gain mounted weapon for uh, proficiency. Mounted weapon, really? So can you have people basically jumping on the back of an ATV or something or a, or a Humvee? Could be really, really cool. Alongside the, uh, the training, we also have stuff like equipments. You can actually customize and you will want to customize your character's equipment. Everything is uh, kind of controlled by the encumbrance value, though. So we want to go ahead and give our heavy gunner here a spare magazine. I'll probably include at least a spare magazine for everyone. And I don't really know yet how long some of these missions are going to be. So maybe in some cases we might run out. In other cases, we might be fine. But you can just click the word ammo here next to your weapon, and it's going to load your person up with ammunition. Let's go ahead and drop off because I actually got too much here. We'll load this back into storage. So we have ammunition here in storage. It actually kind of looks like we're a little short, though. We only have two more magazines or, or um, yeah, magazines of the heavy Phoenix ammo. We'll also go ahead and give Zillikin a grenade. I don't really see a, a situation where he'll use a grenade. Uh, maybe. They're, the action points that are used to fire your weapon and use a grenade are different. So maybe if he finds himself in a position where he can't fire his weapon, but he could throw a grenade, we might use that. You also can change the armors. 
Uh, we only have a certain type of armor available right now, but again, everything goes towards this encumbrance value, which can be increased with the strength stat. Uh, let's also go ahead and give Turnby a med kit, as well as a spare sniper rifle magazine. Dominic, we're going to go ahead and give you a spare uh, assault rifle magazine for your Phoenix assault rifle, along with a grenade. We'll give you a second grenade, and I'd like to give Jade a spare uh, head, me uh, med kit here. Now, this is the ready column. The ready column is stuff that you can use without having to dig into your inventory. So I believe if we had a spare ma like a spare grenade here, we'd have to load this into our inventory first, like probably one action point, and then still use that, you know, two action points to throw a grenade. We'll talk about more action points later on. Um, why don't we... We're a little low on some items. Why don't we manufacture? I think every time I, you drag, you see this manufacturing thing here. Let's manufacture a couple more Odin grenades. How much does this cost? It costs one tech point and just a tiny bit of material. That shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, we have equipment here, which looks like everything we've already come across, I think. What's the Ares 1? Oh, that's the, that's the normal thing. It's the Ares Phoenix Assault Rifle. The Cypher looks like a pistol, which I think is what our sniper has. Okay, so this is pretty basic stuff. Vehicle-wise, what are you? The PX Scarab. You're an armored fighting vehicle. So does this mean Scarab Missile Turret? Is this a vehicle we can just take with us? As like our little friend on our mission? That's actually kind of cool. We don't have, you know, I mean, why put your soldiers in danger when you can use a robot to do it for you? 700 hit points. Holy crap, I think our, our troopers have like 100 or 120. So this could be very useful. I don't know if we're going to need anything else. Let's go to the base real quick. I meant to go ahead and start up food production because we are using food every day to feed our soldiers. And so it seems to me that we're going to need some, you know, initial bit of food. So if we go ahead and start building this, we can no longer afford that fancy little robot. So we'll keep that in mind for later on. Hey, research time. So research is flashing at me, which means we have open research. Atmospheric analysis is the first thing we can research. This is going to help us see this global mist, I guess, that is around the country and around the world. Now, from what I've read, the mist, if you fight in the mist, it makes the mission harder in some way. And I also, I really don't know what to expect. I've gone into a couple of missions, like tutorial stuff, and then one mission afterwards. So that's about as far into the game as I've gotten. So I know how to use the basic mechanics, but not very well. So if I'm doing something that could be done better or more efficiently, please, by all means, let me know in the comments below. Right. So we've got our base all set. We've got our research all set. And our manufacturing is kicked off. Diplomacy, we don't know of any of our other factions yet. There are three other factions in the game that were alluded to in the opening cutscene. So really, from here, we can do two things. We can start scanning an area. Basically, we do this scan. I think it scans out to this marker. And it, what it's going to do, it's going to reveal more of these sites right here, these unexplored sites. So we're going to start scanning. It only use a, uh, uses a couple of points. And we're also going to go to one of these sites here, since it's got, we've got like, um, is it six hours? Six hours until atmospheric analysis is done. Let's just go over to one of these sites to start investigating. So let's explore this one. It does take a little bit of time, and then there is a chance that you're going to get ambushed too. So your soldiers, you want to be careful about just sending one soldier by themselves. Uh, the Dreamers awaken at Fort Hera. Fort Hera is a haven run by New Jericho, which is one of the three factions. Uh, basically, it looks like a group of soldiers went crazy and started attacking. So, we're going to stop the soldiers, and New Jericho is going to greatly appreciate it. So, who's on our mission here? Well, I mean, who's on our mission? It's the only four troops that we have available, but everything is all set. They're all checked. I think this is kind of how we say who's going on what mission. Uh, this indicates that they have open ready slots, but again, Zillikin specifically is kind of out of gear. Maybe I could do this. Okay, there we go. We'll put we'll put this spare cannon magazine in his inventory, so I guess he could reload easier, perhaps. Maybe that's how uh, that slot is taken or used. So, all four of our troops are checked. Everyone is full health, full stamina. Let's do this. Welcome to the map. Here we go. So we are kind of outside uh, what seems to be a little bunker complex. If I press middle mouse, you get like this temporary zoom out. So that's pretty useful. Pretty small map. 
So everything is going to take place inside or very close to this little bunker here. And I mean, it makes sense because the story is that there are some troops that basically went nuts and we're trying to hunt them down. Uh, vertically, we have a second story and what looks to be kind of a, what is this kind of a room? Like a workshop that's pretty tall and then we have another roof. So we could enter in a couple different ways if we need to. We can go through windows, we can go... Um, up to get upstairs, we have to use the ladder. However, our heavy does in fact have jetpacks. If you happen to catch that in the customization screen, he does in fact have a pretty awesome jetpack. It uses three action points and two will points. So let's talk about action points real quick. If we target, uh, if we select one of our normal soldiers here, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff on, around the feet, right? This little circle, another blue circle, yellow, and a farther yellow. Each circle indicates one action point. The color of the circle is telling you if you can use the currently equipped item after moving. So if you move anywhere in blue, you'll be able to still use whatever is selected down here. So you can see that the rifle uses two pips to fire. The grenade uses two pips. The healing medkit uses two pips as well. So in the bottom left, you can see their current action points. And I believe everyone always has four. Maybe you can upgrade that later with research. I'm not sure. But the way the portraits are made up, it makes me think that they're only ever going to have four. So, we could say, for example, and you can even see the mouse moving away, it's making the the pip there smaller. So you can actually move uh, a shorter distance and then kind of... You can actually break up your movement and your firing in the same turn. So, tons of flexibility here for us. So let's talk about examples over kind of just talking about it. So right now, we should be able to get to this window and take an action. If we need to fire... We could fire because moving will take this is one pip to this edge and then two pips to this edge so let's right click to move right in front of this lower window there we go so we're in half cover and now if we wanted to we could fire the weapon or we can use overwatch and the overwatch in this game is really cool because you can kind of say where you want your overwatch to be and in my opinion i think the most likely spot would either be this corner uh or it could be around this corner but i do plan on trying to move our sniper to cover that alleyway so I'm going to move, or have Jade here, cover this door. And you can see the highlight on the wall. So it's basically, if anyone comes in this door, Jade is going to get a lovely little shot right there. Next up, we've got Dominic. Uh, Dominic is the other assaulter. Dominic can make it all the way around this corner and into hard cover, like full cover behind this outcropping. Um, Let's do this. Let's have him move to the edge of the corner, because I want to show you how... You can take almost like your full movement, but still have a couple of squares left. So he's going to rush to the corner, check the alleyway. Okay, so I think he can see some of the alleyway. And now he can actually continue his movement to the rest of the window, which is really great. It's not just one movement and then you're firing and you're done. The other cool thing is that your weapon itself has different calculations What's based on every single bullet. So if we fire a burst like the Ares 1 does... It'll fire six rounds out, and each of those rounds has its own calculation to hit. So instead of all hitting or all missing, you have a chance of hitting on some and missing on some. So the uh, turn B, the sniper rifle here, uses three action points. So we're not really going to be able to do much on this turn. Why don't we put... Let's move turn B their full distance around hard cover back here. Because if someone is down this alleyway, or comes outside of any of these windows, or hopefully... Let's see, this far back. I think if they come in and show themselves up on this uh, ridge here, ledge, uh, Termi will be able to get a shot. So this seems like a great spot for a sniper. We're going to have them basically full out sprint, get to the spot, and cover. Cool. So end your turn. And finally, Zillikin. I don't know about Zillikin. He doesn't... He is, again, three points to move. So you can see how small this box is. They can basically breathe. And that's as much as they can do in one turn before firing. So it's really establish your person where you need them to be and then hope you're close enough to, you know, make a small adjustment. Let's put them really, really close to this window. So, like, if he if he were right here, he'd have to move over, over, down. So over, over, down. He wouldn't be able to do that normally. So I guess, I don't know if this is going to be awkward or not. He can move two squares to the right. Let's move him two squares to the left. I know he's out in the open, but right now there's no real threats. I guess somebody could pop around this corner, but I'm kind of hoping that most of the enemy is going to be centered in this area. 
I'm going to really regret this. It's kind of a longer shot, so I don't feel terrible about it. And he also is very beefy. You can tell that he's got 160 hit points here with 32 armor. And who else actually would have... Oh, 160 and 20. So 160, 20, 160, 20, and 32. If we actually go into info, not inventory, uh, there we go. You can actually see the body parts are broken down. So you can both aim at enemy body parts and they can aim at your body parts too. So if we destroy certain body parts, bad things are going to happen, which we'll talk about once they start to, uh, to actually occur. But that is it for uh, Mr. Zillikin. We'll end your turn. Turn me end your turn as well. And yes, let's go ahead and start the independent turn. Hello, friend. How are you? There we go. So somebody there in the corner, or in the uh, sorry, outside of the building, along this back alley. We're hearing someone inside, and we've got this person here on the roof going into the main part of the bunker, I guess. Interesting. So we've got three enemies on the map. The only one we may have a shot on is this one. In fact, we do. There's the uh, the symbol indicating that, yes, Turnby does have eyes on the target. So let's press F. And that is the automatic, kind of the computer shot. The coloration, the more white this bar is, the better chance your shot is at hitting. How far this bar goes is how much damage you're going to cause, possibly. And if you zoom in or press this button, you actually get to manually aim, which is pretty freaking cool if you ask me. Um, this guy is really behind cover. And the cool part is, yes, this is actually realistic cover if you shoot this wall the shot will in fact miss it's not like XCOM where stuff is magic and you shoot through barriers you you will literally miss your target um in order to still shoot crap what kind of an angle do we need to be able to still shoot our friend here I don't know if we'd be able to move behind this pillar and have a great shot but I mean at the end of the day I don't know if it really matters let's go ahead and move here and take a look at our options. So, pretty much the exact same angle. Because <laughs> we moved farther back. Even though we moved to the left, it's still pretty much farther back. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to set Overwatch on Turnby. And we're going to set this Overwatch all the way to here. So if this enemy moves forward from their position, we're going to take a shot. So Turnby is going to stay on Overwatch for us. I still like this idea of covering the main door in case anyone comes on through. So let's go ahead and keep Jade on Overwatch for the main door. Uh, Zillikin. Now, Zillikin does have the ability, like I said, to use the jetpack. Although, why can't we jetpack right now? There is no valid target. Oh, he might be too close to the border. Why can't we do this one? No valid target. We might be too close to the wall. Oh, you know what? There's something right above him. I'm going. That's actually really awesome. So you actually do have to be out of something above you. That's surprisingly very in-depth. Now look at the range of this jump jet. This is absolutely insane. We could have him pretty much fly wherever the heck he wants. You know what? What if we put him up here on the roof? Now the only danger is it. what if there's another enemy that is up on the roof? That part I'm not too crazy about. We could put him here, which would cover... This person's, you know, if this person continued to run outside, however, whatever this person does, Zillikin would have a pretty decent shot. And if there's still somebody over here that we can't see, he wouldn't immediately get popped. All right, let's move him right here to the ledge. We're going to give it a shot. Willpower, by the way, willpower is what you use when you do your special abilities. And if you get to zero willpower... Ooh, there is another enemy in there. Okay, good. I'm glad we didn't go too super ham and dive right into the middle. Um... But willpower basically is, it controls what your special actions are. And we start getting into this more in depth later on. I believe if your maximum willpower goes to zero, you can panic. Although I'm not really sure about which mechanic is which. Like, maybe it's the first willpower, or it could be the second one. I'm not sure. I'm sure we'll find out at some point. So Zillikin's going to eat some shots from both of these folks, which is going to be a little bit rough. But we, we do have height advantage, so hopefully that might help out. Um... That being the case, let's start slowly making our way over here. We do have coverage from our sniper, so let's move Dominic up. Let's see if Dominic has a decent shot on our friend here. He, do it. he does, in fact. Okay, so you can see how the current target is six individual arrows. That means it's six individual bullets. And overall, you have like a quarter chance to shoot this person. The center circle 
is, let me start with the outer circle. The outer circle is where your bullets are going to land. So guaranteed your bullets are going to land somewhere in this outer lighter blue circle. Or I guess it's darker blue. The inner circle is a 50% chance for your bullet to strike there. So what we want to try to do, especially early game when our characters are still kind of rough, is include as much of the body in the shot as possible. And I don't know if, does the game automatically choose the best spot? This one says right above the letter S. Now if we go into it, can we find, we can find a little bit of a better angle here that includes more of the body. So I suppose... <laughs> This is interesting. I don't know if we're going to do that great. And this is, by the way, this is also where you're seeing what happens if you disable that limb. So if we disable the leg, they'll bleed for a little bit of damage. They can't move as much, and their max hit points is reduced, or are reduced. They hit them in the head, they lose 5 willpower, which is huge, and they have max hit point reduction, and they bleed as well. So, that's something to keep in mind. I believe enemies also lose willpower if their allies are dead. So hitting the head and then, you know, basically killing the allies does have a chance of panicking the enemy. You also can shoot the weapon, which is pretty cool, too. You can completely destroy an enemy's weapon. Um, right, so I don't really know. I'm going to just go for center mass and see kind of what we've got. We're including the shoulders here, the body. The armor value reduces the... I believe it reduces the damage up front. So if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, I think we do 30 damage per shot. And since they have 24 armor, we're going to basically have our damage reduced. So we're not going to do a lot this far away. But let's give it a, a, a little try, anywho. Okay, so we did a little bit of damage to their equipment. Oh, they returned fire automatically. There's a skill in the Assaulter Tree that lets you return fire when an enemy shoots at you. So that's good to know. They are actually a little bit higher skilled, I believe, in the tree. All right, we're out of action points. Let's see what our enemies decide to do this turn. Just a straight up shot. Nothing super complicated. They're going to shoot twice, actually. Again, each action point, you get four action points. Each firing costs two action points. So they didn't blow all of their action points. They could actually sit there and fire twice. Ooh, both of these friends are tucking right up against the wall, which is going to make it a hard shot for Zillikin to make. This one, it just kind of kind of popped out of the, the, uh, the inside here. So... We've got two enemies approaching from this flank, and two enemies down here. This could be fun. Let's see what kind of shots Zill has. Nothing. <laughs> Zill has no shot on either of these guys because they're tucked in perfectly with the wall. But I think at the same time, they may not be able to shoot him. Alright, what about our sniper? What kind of shot does our sniper here have? Still only the person that's far away. Dang, and they're not going to have a shot unless they move much closer. This is kind of tricksy. Turnby still does have a pistol, so we could move, for example, if we change this to pistol, you'll see how it says we can now move this far and still shoot in one turn. So we could move Zill closer this turn and save the sniper rifle for the next turn, or we could do an overwatch. Um, I'm kind of tempted to move Zill here and we're, or sorry, Turnby, sorry, Turnby. And we're going to select the rifle, which we have, and then do overwatch down this alleyway. So again, any target, and I, I kind of want to focus this closer guy. So if this one closer up decides to charge at us, we're going to open fire on them. I'm going to pull Dominic back and do the same thing. I'm going to be a little more passive in the first couple of missions. I really don't know what to expect. But I believe, you know, forcing the enemy to come to you is going to be a pretty solid option. Meanwhile, if our enemies cross this corner, or, or uh, turn the corner here, they're not going to be able to see our sniper, Turnby. So why don't we go ahead and say, since we know where they're coming from, well, we could try to flank them out this way, but if we go into here, this one could easily jump inside and flank us. Let's move Jade over, kind of just basically we're bounding down on these little uh, barrier outcropping things. So we're going to cover this edge right there. Beautiful stuff. And then I guess Zill... I don't know what to do with Zill. We could jump again. Shoot, we could jump all... Now that we know where the, some of the enemies are and he can see the roof, we could jump all the way up here. The downside would be, I imagine, what they're going to do is just go outside and we wouldn't have any kind of shot whatsoever. Uh, we could try to move Zill behind coverage. This jump jet is insane. Look at the distance here. 
This is absolutely crazy. So, does a tree provide coverage? Let's do this. Let's go and choose someone else. What's our plan? Okay, the tree does not provide cover. Oh, we couldn't. T we can't tell. We can't tell if the tree provides cover once your turn's over with. Five by five. Okay, so we're not going to be able to, to basically see unless we're there. We could drop down. The problem is Zill's hell cannon here does explode. It does explosive damage. So I don't know if that means he's going to take, you know, a little bit of extra damage. You know what? Screw it. We're going to give it a shot. Zill, drop down. Death from above, my friend. And we are going to straight up open up on this guy. Blind, like, direct fire. If you look at the upper, uh, the um, up top there, you can see that this right here, where'd it go? Right here. This estimates that we will kill them in one shot. Guaranteed kill shot because our round does 180 damage. We're guaranteed to do at least 156. So let's give it a shot. Center mass. I can't see because we're so close. <laughs> but I just, I, I did hear their body. Yeah, there we go. Their enemy uh, went down. They lost two will points. We gained two will points. So killing your enemy does reduce will points. Lovely. There we go. There goes our triggered, uh, our triggered overwatches. One there. Come on, sniper. Do it. Nice shot. Disabled the arm. Yeah, you're going to have a rough time of it, man. And I think it's turned over with, too, which is great. Now, yeah, Zill did definitely open himself up for this shot right here. But Zill is in heavy, heavy armor. So he can kind of eat some of those shots. Okay, so you're going to overwatch at the end of the row. Man, poor, uh, poor Jade here is kind of a between a rock and a hard place. Like, it's not like she's trapped. She just keeps responding to things that aren't really a problem. Let's move Jade all the way to the end of this corner. She can't do anything but shout encouragement to her friends. Next up, we're going to use Turnby, because I'd love to level Turnby up. So let's get, uh, let Turnby take the kill. Beautiful headshot, pretty much guaranteed. I'm going to do the neck, because it's pretty much guaranteed damage here. So everything pretty much inside. It's interesting, right here up top, you'd think the headshot would be an instant kill, but I'm not getting that little death skull icon until I'm like, okay, like the shoulder. So it's interesting. I wonder if it, you know, if it counts certain types of, uh, types of, uh, armor. The head, though, I guess there's a sliver of around the side of the head where the bullet could go. Let's just do center mass. Center mass shot. Beautiful. Enemy down. Or not even enemy. I'm sorry. It's a misguided soldier who kind of went crazy because they ate some swamp gas or something. Next up, we have this enemy who is doing overwatch on our entire area. But I think... How far can we throw this grenade? Just shy of where we can throw the grenade. I I think we're okay if we go ahead and decide to pop the overwatch. Like, this is a pretty sharp angle. What if we just dash around... Or we could try to move up. We're going to eat a little bit of Overwatch if we do that. Let's go ahead and be... Let's just be safe. We have one more turn. We have to kill this guy anyways. Which uh, could probably be done this turn. Let's just do Overwatch. And I'll move everyone up next turn. And then Zell's basically going to just stay still. And uh, blow this person all the kingdom come. Assuming we don't miss. There's a little tiny bit of a gap on the right arm. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll hope and see. There we go. Beautiful shot. We destroyed his bulldog. We destroyed him. Oh, wait. He's still up. Oh, his his weapon took all of the damage there. So <laughs> what do they do now? I guess we'll move up closer. Man, maybe we'll just go punch him next turn. He's just going to run away. <laughs> oh, man. That is super rough. The other guy down here at the end of the, the way is just going to keep overwatching. So, Brave Dominic. You're going to sprint all the way to this next window. You will trigger the overwatch. Fire. So hopefully this won't hurt terribly much. It did hurt quite a bit. We're basically half health at this point. But you now have a nice open shot. Uh, we'll go for... I really don't want to include their rifle because their rifle almost acts like additional protection. So let's go for kind of upper torso and head. There we go. A little bit of damage on the bulldog. A good amount of damage on them as well. Let's go ahead and grab Jade. Jade has not had a chance to play yet, so unfortunately there's no good cover for her. So I could either move her up and just shoot, but what I think is smarter is to move her up into full coverage. And she'll fire in the next round. So she's going to sit there and growl at the enemy for the moment. We'll end the turn of Dominic. Our sniper friend, Turnby, uh, really can't do a whole lot this turn. 
I'm going to move Turnby here. And maybe next turn I'll move him up just a tiny bit. I guess he could fire with his pistol. To try to take like one little shot. Or not. <laughs> There's nothing really going on there. Alright. We'll save you for next turn. Meanwhile, Zill still has one more shot. So hopefully right in the back will be lovely. Uh, we, I think as you fire, is there recoil in this game? I'm, I can't tell if the circle is bigger or smaller. Let's try to give a shot in the back. Oh, oh, oh that is absolutely brutal. Giant explosive round to the back. Now, you notice here that there is something they drop. So they, they did seem to drop something. I'm going to go over to it and pick it up. I don't know if we can get this at the end of the round or like automatically at the end of combat. So I'm going to walk over to it and see what it is. Hopefully we won't kill this person on this next turn early. You're going to take one step and overwatch. Okay, you were having a rough time. You're basically in full retreat. Let's get Zill onto this box. And can I do anything here? Oh, it is a backpack. Can I press I on my backpack? No. Oh, the ground. Yes. It is a Bulldog AR-50 magazine. I guess we'll just grab it because, I mean, really, there's nothing else going on for Zill. He's pretty much out of combat at this point. We should be able to finish this one off. Uh, sniper, still no shot. And really, if we move our sniper anywhere, they're not going to have a shot. So, unfortunately, nothing going there. Uh, let's let Jade take a bit of the brunt of the attack here. So, she's going to eat an Overwatch shot. Pretty hardcore. Oh, that's, that wasn't bad at all, actually, surprisingly. And there we go. Enemy in the open. Lovely little headshot. And, again, I don't know. Is he... Doesn't seem to be doing all that much damage. I think we would wind up doing more damage to the legs than anything. So let's go ahead and disable their leg if we can. <laughs> Shooting. I used to be a soldier until I got shot in the kneecap. Oh, I forget they had that return fire too. Not the worst thing ever, but it uh, is something to keep in mind. Let's move Dominic into this little gap here. I know he's low, so we could either... Oh, he does not have a healing kit though. Then I guess we will be doing just plain old damage here. Again, center torso up high if possible to avoid the gun. Good stuff. You got. Ooh, good. They missed both shots there. They could decide to take their entire turn against Dominic, which would not be healthy. Now, we could move in front of him and possibly block for him. But I think what we'll do is we'll move our sniper up to prepare for the final round and the turn here. Let's see what the enemy decides right. to do. Run and hide. Just like we like it. Uh oh Oh no! They decided to take that shot on our friend here, who is not doing too hot. Disabled head, so their willpower is pretty hardcore low. And they are bleeding as well, but it's not the end of the road. Dominic is still up. Let's move Jade over to the corner. To see if we can't do a lovely finishing... You know what? Hang on. Before that... Oh, our poor sniper still doesn't have a dang shot. <laughs> Turnby has not had uh, a lot of fun this one. Acquiring targets. Alright, there we go. Center, center mass. Can we finish him off, please, maybe? We're so close. We're so close here to finishing this one off. Yeah, you are. Can I have... What kind of a shot do you have? You have a not bad shot here. Let's see if we can finish him off right there. There we go. Dominic was able to get their revenge. So our first mission is completed. I believe that was all the enemies. Yes, it was. On the board, so we get our mission complete. Level up, maybe? Awesome, we got two level ups there, Zillikin and Dominic, Assaulter and a Heavy. Uh, Jade is pretty hardcore injured, Dominic is pretty injured as well, and we get our skill pool. And then I guess this is basically skill points pool four. I think that's skill points pool, is that the overall pool that we can share, I believe, between all the different operatives? I had always assumed the Phoenix Project would return one day, even after Symes disappeared. It seems to the defining pattern of your history. Fall, then rise again. I wonder if this points to an underlying weakness or an underlying strength. Well, thank you, Tobias West. What happened to these soldiers was uh, was disconcerting. Did not he didn't intervene. He basically let he us do the whole work. Rude. Okay, we get now. some attitude adjustment, but plus four to Phoenix to Project to, uh, with New Jericho, and then 600 materials, which is a pretty lovely payday. Hey, you know what? While I'm thinking of it, Let's go back to this vehicle tab. Oh, we're just shy on tech. We don't have enough technology points to build this scarab here, whatever this is going to be. Right, so after this mission, if we go to our personnel tab, you can see that everyone is not doing too hot. Definitely need a lot of 
stamina recovery as well as health recovery. This will take how long? Uh, I don't think it told me right out of the gate. So maybe somewhere it's going to tell me how long it's going to take for our folks to recover. Um, level up wise, we should be able to go into, yes, we can go into this screen now. We've got some new options. So resourceful would give 25% bonus carry weight with two strength. Brawler does more melee damage. Reckless does bonus damage, but reduced accuracy. I don't know if I want reduced accuracy on a gun that's already pretty wild as it is. I'm kind of torn on this one. I wouldn't mind having more just, you know, kind of a bruiser. If he doesn't get the chance to, to smack him with his 3 AP, maybe he can use 2 AP to beat their face in. That could be kind of fun. 2 strength would be kind of nice, though. Let's go ahead and do the brawler for the moment. I like the idea of, of Zillikin in uh, in a pinch running up to somebody and punching them in the face. I also want to start boosting the willpower stats of everyone. I don't know what the best number is. I'm going to go for a nice even 10. And then after a while, we'll figure out if that works for everyone or not. I'm going to go ahead and give Zillikin the rest of the points are going to go into movement. Because he is super, super slow. So getting him farther in the battlefield is going to be very useful for us. Uh, Turnby does not have any additional points. Dominic, though, did get a level up. So, I believe if we give them the Sniperist, they could start using Sniper Rifles. Although I don't... I don't know, Does it? would it be kind of cool to have a, an Assaulter with a Sniper Rifle? Quarterback, 50% bonus grenade range with 2 speed. Uh, dash, move to a target position within half of the normal movement range. This basically gives us uh, a free extra a uh, AP of movement. So I think that's going to come in handy, especially for this Assaulter. Let's go ahead and do this for Dominic. And we'll put some points again. Willpower. I might just do a little willpower every level up until we really figure out what a good balance is. The rest of this is going to go all into speed. I want our people all over the map. All right, good stuff. There we go. So personnel are all set. We are going to uh, bring them back. What do we see here? Haven info. Okay, so this is a permanent haven at Fort Hera. The leader is Irene Zambrano. There are 9,500 people here. Military strength of 20. I don't really know what the values are in any kind of you know way, shape, or form. Miss status free. Increase the starvation rate and the risk of Pandoran attack. Interesting. Very interesting stuff. All right, let's go ahead and move them uh, back to the base. There we go. Four soldiers at base hanging out, being calm, enjoying their life. I okay, here we go. Nine hours to heal, 32 hours, 25 hours. That's how we can find out how long it'll take our friends to recover. Good stuff. I think from here, we're just going to unpause the game. Oh, we just completed our research. Atmospheric analysis. We can now monitor the mist. The the creepy, creepy mists of the world. Okay, there we go. So out here in the Indian Ocean, I believe, is where one of the mists are. Nothing inland. So I don't know if they come really far inland or if they only kind of go along the coastline. A couple new research items here. The Phoenix Archives. We've uh, discovered a batch of encrypted files on the mainframe of the newly reclaimed base. Okay. We can basically learn a little bit about what the Phoenix Archives or the Phoenix Project is. Haven Recruitment. This seems like it's going to be super useful. Leader of Reconnaissance Team has proposed that we attempt to recruit capable people from the different havens out there. Yes, I would absolutely love to get more people because we currently have open slots so every time we go into battle without someone we're mostly just not using all of our available power so and then finally new jericho which i'm guessing is just we get a flat bonus and maybe we can talk to them diplomacy there is sabotage the haven oh sabotage Sindrian. oh this is one of their missions i think they're offering us a mission to sabotage an enemy faction um, location. I don't really want to do that. But yeah, research is free material, so I guess why not? Let's queue up the Phoenix Archives and finally New Jericho. All right, there we go. We are back in base. Let's go ahead and unpause. We're going to recover a bit. And the green circle, again, is the expanding scan. So we're basically scanning the area around us, and we're unlocking different sites, as you can see. I'm basically just trying to get my people recovered. There is the recruitment protocol, so we can locate havens with leaders favorable to our cause and hopefully get a couple of recruits. So there's a new symbol here. Recruitable population at Haven. Hello. We have one sniper, RJ Sadus Catterton. It would cost 345 food 
400 some odd material and 34 tech points. So we cannot afford uh, Mr. Catterton here, unfortunately. But maybe in the future we could get a new sniper into our lives. Food production still in two days. The Phoenix Archives in one day. Let's go ahead and unpause again. We're still trying to recover basically at this point. I will do another mission here very soon, but of course we want to have full health as much as possible. That's a crazy first day. That was only one day so far. It's been uh, it's been quite a lively morning. It looks like you can speed up or slow down the game time, by the way, too. So how much time is passing in game. If you have a really long time for recovery, you could speed up or reduce that. Right, so all of our people, I believe, are back up and running. Yep, everyone's back at full strength. So let's queue up another mission here. We've got tons of these unexplored sites to look into. So let's move our Manticore 1 here. Uh, we just unlocked the Phoenix Archives. Okay, so there's no sign of Randolph Symes III, but he has left something potentially useful. Randolph Symes was the last leader of the Phoenix Project. His great-grandfather had been there when it was founded, and he was there to witness its end. When we took back Phoenix Point, we found his notes. In his final days, as the world collapsed around him, he had been working frantically to understand the Pandora virus. Somewhere in the complicated history of the project, in decades of missions and investigations, there had to be an answer. His notes were damaged, too many of the files corrupted. But perhaps, if we could retrace his steps, we could figure out where his journey had taken him, and what the answers he had discovered would mean for us. Alrighty, so... Mr. Symes here uh, apparently is a pretty important fixture in the history of our Phoenix project. Randolph Symes III, uh, his notes indicate the existence of a private retreat. So go to his retreat and check stuff out. Okay, we should send our operatives to investigate. How far away is that? Uh, oh gosh, that is a thousand miles away from us right now. Yeah, I think I'd rather do a couple of sites near here. I don't know how tough these missions are supposed to be at the start of the game. I would assume if they're giving them to you now... You have the capability to do it. All right, let's finish up. Uh, get to this site. Explore. What do we have? A thousand enemies in our face. Oh, hey, we found another uh, another haven here. New Jericho. The leader is Aurora Maria. And so, yeah, there are different havens. And there is a recruitable person here as well. Philip Chaos Wolf de Thahal. Again, 345 food. We don't have enough food to do the recruiting here. Elite residences. Havens with substantial populations belonging to either have elite residences for their ruling class. Okay, cool stuff. Let's go... I guess we'll just bounce to a couple of these different sites until we find something really interesting to look into. Is this expanding? Oh, the mist is expanding. Oh, that's awful. Does it go away over time? It's going to be terrible. Um, our operatives have discovered a highly fortified skyscraper. Okay, the site appears to be abandoned. Our findings indicate that this location was fortified by the owners of a hedge fund who intended to outlast the end of days. It's beginning to crumble. Uh, would have been a good place to survive the early years of the apocalypse. Very cool. So we're going to investigate, I guess. Oh, okay. So it's like an instant thing. Um, we just got 80 food and 400 materials. So there's going to be different little caches of items here uh, across the map. So very cool stuff. Yeah, this is expanding, by the way. This is like about to get to our base. This is awful. Why don't we try to nab this site before it gets into the mist? Like, I don't want the mist to expand right on this site before we're even able to do it. Oh, we can area scan somewhere far away? Or do we have to be there? Scan an area, revealing sites of interest, but it's doing this from our home base. Area scan. You see how the green circle looks like it's centered on our home base as opposed... Okay, so it's the home base... This yellow circle here is our radar, I think. Or our, maybe our range or something. Alright, let's explore this site here. New Jericho is a militaristic organization founded by Tobias West. This is the research on New Jericho. Uh, values, reason, and meritocracy. New Jericho prioritizes or valorizes human will as the foundation of freedom. Yeah, there we go. Also, Tobias West sounds like a great faction leader name. New Jericho was one man's vision and everything depended on that one man. Before the war, Tobias West had been a billionaire, an elusive, controversial businessman who denounced war even as he profited from it. When the world fell, his empire began to rise. 
Some said he was a genius, a man of principle, dedicated to equality and merit, fighting to preserve the core of human freedom, our will. They said he had a plan, that he could lead us to victory. Others called him a dictator, a megalomaniac, fearful of infection and obsessed with purity. They said he was willing to do anything to win, no matter the cost. The Phoenix Project needed allies. New Jericho could help us turn the tide, but it all depended on one man. One man to rule them all. He even has a really cool voice actor too. Whoever does the voice acting sounds really great. Uh, we do have more research, maybe? Yes, we do. We have new research available. The Oniric or Oniric Delirium Index. We could develop the thing uh, proposed by Randolph Symes into a system for tracking the unusual momentum phenomenon caused by the Pandoran presence. A Delirium Monitoring Stations Available or System Available or Haven Trade. I don't know what this Delirium Index is, but it sounds like fun. Let's go ahead and queue up both of these. I'd rather prioritize this little system that we can maybe monitor things with over trade. Um, yeah, this stuff is definitely spreading. I wonder how long, like, will it continue to spread from here and just forever? Or is it going to maybe go back a little bit? Because otherwise we're going to be screwed very soon because our base is in this stuff. This is awful. All right. Uh, one more haven. Recruitable population here. But again, I don't think we have the food for it. Iseline Zila McIntyre, who is a heavy. Uh, let's go down here again. We, I'm surprised we haven't found any more stuff here. We're almost in the fog. Or the mist. Here we go. Exploration site. Uh, maps of the world. Manticore 1 has discovered an old factory that seems to have been temporarily used as the headquarters of a military recon unit. Awesome. Recover geographic data. Three scavenging points and one longinus point. Or it's called Longinus Point, apparently. Okay, what do we got? We have three of these caches. Where's this um, Longitude Point thing? What is this? This is Longinus or Longinus Point. Longinus Point. Okay, so it's basically a haven. Is it neutral? Independ okay, so it's an independent site. Very interesting. And this was supposed to be some kind of a cache. Well, I guess the I expected us to get to another mission. But it almost seems like we're going to um, kind of just be on our own here. Scavenging site. Oh, uh, here we go. Eliminate all enemies to claim the resource crates. All right. So threat level low. Light levels night. Enemy is Pandoran. That sounds good. Let's take one of these scavenger missions. We'll do one more battle for this episode. Our inaugural episode of Phoenix Point. And uh, we'll kind of wrap it up after that. All right. Our first scavenging mission here. Baby's first scavenging mission. So we've got... Um, I guess these are what we're trying to get to, to protect all of our friends here. And I'm guessing this might just mean they can come from either of these sides. Whatever there's a marker here, this is where they can arrive from, I'm, I suppose. So this, this flank maybe is clear. Uh, is that what the game is trying to tell us? I have no idea. So we need to book it, I'm guessing, over to these, uh, these com containers here. So here is Speedy. We're Speedy. Yeah, this is, uh, Zillikin. So... Let's choose Dominic. Dominic does have this new dash ability. So let's have... Da uh, let's see, how does this work? So this is two pips out. Two movement pips of action points. And if we do the dash, it'll only cost one action point. So it's basically just you get twice as far with one AP. All right. That's... Oh, you can do it back to back. Kind of interesting. Now, here's a question. If he gets to zero, I'm pretty sure if the first number gets to zero, they don't go crazy and panic. I'm not 100% sure. I'm like, you know, 50% sure. Not really high confidence levels right now. Uh, not the best Overwatch position, but if we move... Wait, what the heck? We just double... Is it only one tiny section? Wait, what was this? This was... So Dominic dashed all the way here, but look at the pips. We still have... Four full action markers. That's crazy. We still have our entire full turn to move. Turn. I don't know why I got Southern there. Let's put um, Dominic on this little corner. This is going to be a pretty good overwatch for this entire sector. So we'll say, what can you even see? Everything. Okay. 
So you can pretty much see the world. Let's put the Overwatch here. So you're covering that approach. We're going to start making our folks sprint. Uh, Zillikin, this looks like... It, well, we could use your freaking uh, Mandalorian um, jetpack if we wanted to. This would cost three action points. So, I mean, you can pretty much... You will get farther than you could running, though. Which might be really important for the future. Let's move you here. Oops, sorry. I actually have to left-click instead of right-click. Move you here. Up and away, my friend. A little higher than you... I wonder if it gives us vision. Does this count as having vision up high? I guess there's nobody in the open or else he would have spotted them. We also could go up, apparently. There's a ladder right here. And we could try to secure the upstairs. That's what we're going to do next turn. Let's plant Zillikin right by this ladder. He also should get nice uh, Overwatch into the building. Or at least vision, not Overwatch per se. Uh, next up is going to be Jade. I might do... I don't really know how much we're expecting from this side. Let's move Jade over here. And she's just going to kind of anchor on this right flank. Just in case any friends decide to come through. And then we're going to move Turnby. Um, we'll keep Turnby kind of towards the back here. The, the downside of the sniper is we pretty much have to use full movement whenever you're available. And then try to, you know, get yourself... Try to position yourself before you think you'll need to, right? So the next turn you can use your sniper rifle. Hello, Pandoran friends. We have one of them moving out in the open. Holy crap, what a beastly shot. Nice job, buddy. Damage on the carapace and the leg. There's two. Ugly little bugger. So, right, so what do we have here? We have our new friends. Let's click on info. These are Arthrons. Arthrons have 170 hit points, so they're pretty tanky. But not much in terms of armor. The head arms are both open. Carapace has extra armor. They have a spitter head. Uh, launcher arm and a pincher. Lovely. They seem like great friends. So, I think this is the basic unit, the basic XCOM-ish type unit. Your uh, your basic enemy. We, I mean, Dominic's already doing good work. He he does have two full bursts if he wants to, uh, because he can sit here and just fire away. We could throw a grenade, but I don't think we've got the range on it. Let's press F here. No, we don't. We hmm. How many tiles short are we? That's quite a ways. I think we'd have to almost move up here in order to fire off the grenades. Let's just fire from here. Because if we move up, we're going to expose ourselves over here, and I don't know what's here yet. So let's go ahead and just move up. Or, sorry, uh, take our shot. Seems like a lovely shot. Uh, this is telling me that we're going to get the full kill, according to this. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work out that way, but that's okay. Second shot. A lot of their body is like... They got like this thin center and a wider base. So it does seem like you're doing... You know, you're, there's a chance of your bullets going wide. I'm going to use the default attack instead of aiming. We'll see what that does. Nice job. Uh, one enemy down. They lost two will points. We gained some will points back. Lovely. And now you're at two out of eight instead of zero. So I'm, I'm assuming that's good. Let's go ahead and get Zillikin to move upstairs now... A little dangerous, because I don't know what's upstairs. I'm going to bet my money on the fact that it's a race to these markers. So, we're racing these guys over to all these supply points. So, I'm assuming we're the only ones here yet, right now. And they haven't been destroyed or damaged yet. So, we're going to put Zillikin up top. I'm going to pin him right next to the wall so he can maybe get a shot off. A bit of a sharp angle, but he might be able to get a shot off on one of these guys next turn. So, up you go, my friend. You probably could use your jetpacks, but let's, you know, it's fine. You do what you want. Oh, hey, we got an enemy spotted far away. Oh, kind of over on Jade's... Wait, where's this at? No? Oh, crap, he's right next to the wall. You sneaky bastard. I thought I saw the symbol way down here, but it's just this little spawn symbol. Um, you are not... You are in an ugly, ugly position. Okay, then. Well, it's good to know. That means that... Uh, that might mean that Dominic's getting a visitor next turn. Zillikin, or sorry, Turnby, how far can you move? You could move here and have a lovely angle on this alleyway. And I think that's what I'm going to have you do. You are standing in the open, but I'm going to hope that they're going to go for the closer target rather than the far target. Uh, Sniper-wise, you have an okay shot on the pincher. Not really a whole lot of anything, though. There's the arm... Do we just want to take the shot and go for the damage, or do we want to do Overwatch? I'm going to do Overwatch right here. 
So if any of them go for Dominic, we're going to get the shot off. Also, Jade still has her turn. What can we do with this explosive here? Let's move you up to the wall. Moving to position. Can you destroy this wall? You can. It would expose... It would expose Turnby. But it would also cause a little bit of damage to this enemy here. Oh, we can throw it over the wall, but not damage the wall. Okay, let's try to do that. Let's try to throw it so it damages the enemy, but doesn't hit the wall. Pinpoint grenade throw. Um, we disabled their head and their arm. Bleeding, and they lost a ton of will points. That's actually a really awesome, awesome throw. It must do specific, like, more damage to body parts, is what I'm guessing. It didn't do a ton overall, but it did disable quite a bit. Nice job, Jade. Really well done. Let's go ahead and put the... Oh, uh, we got the rifle equipped. Next turn... I don't know. Maybe we'll go for a flank, or maybe we'll just try to move in here and help Dom. All right. Stand by. Stand by. And yes, we are done with our turn. What do we got? Now, are they going to destroy targets, or are they going to shoot at our friends? They are going to destroy the containers. Okay. So we're probably going to lose a few. What are you doing? Oh, crap. <laughs> guess who Guess who else can use grenades, apparently? They can. Wonderful. Well, that's awkward. So, Zillikin here does have some high ground. So, Anakin is going to deliver justice. You can't do it from here. You could. Let's just move out and get a nice, clear, open shot. I'm pretty sure this is going to be end of, uh, the end of our friend down here. I mean, it's pretty close. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> that's brutal. Absolutely brutal. So good kill, good clean fun, right? Good clean kill. Now, do we only have these three enemies, or are there going to be more? Ah, uh, there's no way. Crap. Dominic is not feeling too hot. I'm here. And barely. You can move here and still use your healing kit. Here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to move Dominic back here. Well, hang on. Jade has a healing kit too, right? She does. Two pips would take her here. All right. We're going to move Dominic to this side of the wall. We're going to move Jade up next to him. And we're going to go ahead and heal our ally. I think it stops the bleeding. Did I just do the wrong thing? No, I have to do... Oh, there we go. Use medkit like this. 120, and I think it stops bleeding. There we go. It doesn't repair the limb itself, but it does stop the immediate threat. Oh! His... His arm is permanently damaged, isn't it? Until he heals up. I think he can't use his... He can't use his weapon for the rest of the round. Oh, that's such a bummer. So, he can really only be used as a rifleman and a grenade thrower from here on out. Okay, that's fair. Good to know. Let's move Dominic back in. Uh, you've actually got quite a bit of movement on you, my friend. Why don't we... Are you destroying this through the wall? I have many questions about your abilities, little pincher friend. You have a ton of movement left, actually. I'm a little afraid about committing him too far in. Let's just keep him where he's at. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's keep him right here. Just in case somebody comes from this side, this would have been a bit exposed. This is nice and tucked in. No enemies, because Zill's up top, and he didn't see anyone in this opening. So, end your turn, my friend. Uh, Jade, go ahead and move Let's into this, this wall. I love that you can move after you've done the majority of your stuff, right? You can move after the fact, which is really cool. Let's send Turnby. I don't know. I can. I guess we'll just send Turnby a little bit close in, and we'll just react to whatever's going on. Go, Turnby, go. You and your beautiful cloak. Okay, he's going to continue to punch our glorious resources. I mean, it is what it is. It was likely that we were going to lose at least one. I, mean, I am glad that he chose to come out of his hiding hole here. And just kind of peek around the corner. So, we have... Oh, you can't fire. You do have grenades, my friend. You do have some grenades. Let's go ahead and start throwing some grenades on our lovely... Uh, our lovely fish friend here. Walls destroyed. Let's go ahead and do another one, I think. Absolutely. Grenades for everyone. You get a grenade. You get a grenade. Beautiful stuff. Pinch your damage. Let's get Jade involved here. Who's on a second level? I think Jade is not leveled up yet. Nor Turnby. So let's see if we need Jade the kill shot. Move over here. I'm going to leave her in the open, but I think she's going to finish this guy off. Yep. Oh, he's going to bleed out. He'll bleed out next turn. 
I think we're okay. Let's move Jade into cover. I love that move, fire, move ability. Stand by there. Uh, we're going to have... Let's have uh, Zillikin move to the other side to see if there's more enemies on the other side of the map. Not yet. So I guess we're just going to cover this open space, perhaps. And then turn B will have turn B, I suppose. Walk over here, cover with the sniper rifle, everything. <laughs> cover the world. There we go, bleeding out. Uh, oh, there was, it did say, traits protected. Oh, kill all enemies. It didn't say, like, there's rounds of it, though. Interesting. I don't know, maybe they come from repeatedly? Enemies over here. Okay. We do hear enemies, at least one enemy, on this far side of the map. Now, I don't know. Are they going to have, you know, continual spawns until you protect your uh, your little stuff here, or what? Let's send Jade in. I don't want to send Dominic because he's already been injured once. What is this little symbol? Does this mean we get to protect the crate? Because this one does not have that symbol. What is this symbol? Let's hide behind this crate, I suppose. Again, I'm learning all this stuff as we go. This kind of stuff is, is all new to me. Uh, we are opening a box with some ammo in it. Alrighty, I'll take that. Let's put Zillikin on this corner. Still no joy on visual, but let's... This beautiful open shot here. Great coverage for Zill. Let's move uh, Turnby across the way. He's not going to be able to fire this round, but next round... He should be able to... What the hell are you? You are disgusting. This is a mind fragger. Gain control of an enemy. That is awful. 110 hit points. No armor across the board. Very weak everything. Okay. Well, that's terrifying. We're going to end Turnby's turn. Uh, we could, though, have Dominic come over here. Crap. He doesn't have any weapons, does he? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, crap. He doesn't have anything. Well, shoot. All set. Can we drop a pistol? Did that just... It did just happen. He did drop the pistol here. I'm going okay, let's move out of the way. Can we get... We can. This is awesome. Let's get Dominic over to the pistol. This is actually really, really cool. Let's pick up the pistol into our ready slot. And then... Do we not have proficiency or did I run out of... Uh, crap. How do I do this? Right here, right? Is this because I don't have enough action points at all? Cost one action point. I'm out of action points. That's fair. We'll get the pistol next round and hope this guy doesn't come. And Although, I guess if he does take over Turnby, or sorry, um, Dominic of all people, that's not the worst case scenario. All right, let's see what our little uh, Mindfragger does along... Oh, there's two of them, okay. No, oh, they're creepy. No, thank you. They have really poor perception. They didn't see us until the last minute. Oh my god, it did it. We have full face ho hugger mode engaged. No. Don't face hugger our friend. So, <laughs> um, no way. So we can't, oh, oh, I bet we can snipe it off. If mind fragger, okay, if we don't shoot the head, this is so absolutely crazy. If we don't shoot the head, we would have a chance of shooting Dominic himself. This is all Dominic's health bar. But if we aim at the Mind Fragger... Look at how close... Look at the, the circle is so tiny. Guaranteed shot on the Mind Fragger at... Sorry, I zoomed out too far. At this distance right here. Okay. Let's pray to God that there's no penetration here. And we're not about to kill Dominic in the head. Oh my God. I'm really worried that we're about to pop Dominic too. Hang on. What else? What other options do we have? Before I commit to this, Jade is right here. She is not far enough or close enough to get the shots off. Let's move her far out, though. I don't want to get double, you know, two people uh, mind jacked here. So you're going to be waiting for the next turn. Zillikin really obviously can't do much. He'd, he'd basically blow away our allies. So let's move Zillikin to the other side of the roof to maybe get this mind jumper thing next turn. And yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to do here. Let's back up a tiny bit. Maybe it'll reduce some of the... If there's any kind of, of, of piercing damage. But by and large, I think we're going to have to go for this Mind Fragger. Oh, please don't kill him. Oh, that was perfect. It actually completely destroyed the Mind thing. 
and left Dominic alone. No action points, but he's not dead, so we're going to call that one a victory. <laughs> Let's see how far... He's going to get... No, he's going to do it again? <laughs> no. Dominic, why? Okay, this is fine. Zill totally has this one, right? No, we're not going to do this. Um, This will be another easy shot, hopefully. <laughs> this is great. This is a great strategy. Just let the mind fragger grab your head and then have your sniper just shoot it off easily like that. Didn't even, still not even damaging our friends. <laughs> a great mission. By great, I mean awful. All right. Thanks so much, my friends, for joining me for this inaugural episode of Phoenix Point. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to the rest of this series. As I said before, if you want to join us in the future, put a comment in the comments below with what character name you want. I do tend to uh, always help supporters first because they're the ones who kind of invested in the channel. So there is a Patreon link there if you'd like to support the channel. Um, in the description below, if you want to join our Discord, there's a link to that as well. And as I said before, if you want to buy this game, if you're interested, I have a link that goes directly to the Epic Games Launcher. kind of uses my creator code, which is Tobal-Plays, and it will throw me back a little bit of money from the purchase too. So thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you as always. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.